don't know their wishes, really struggle because they try to make a decision. They're already struggling with grief because they've just got a phone call, their dad's fallen off a ladder and you're never going to wake up again. They're struggling with that, then they've got to make another decision. So it's always done in the theatre, it's always done by our specialist surgeons that come from PA or Prince Charles. PA do liver and kidneys, Prince Charles do heart lungs. And there's always dignity and respect at all times. And we look after our families, we have grief packs. We, we do supply letters if the, if the donor families and recipients want to write to each other, that's fine. We just screen the letters so that they, they can't, by legislation, find out who they are, that's protected. But, um, they can definitely write to each other and thank each other if they want. And I have a yearly service here on the Gold Coast in June. Next one's June the 15th, and it's for donor families and recipients, and anyone else that wants to come, and it's to honour and thank our donor families for their fantastic gift of life. So I'll just go into a bit about who needs our transplants, and it might not just be that you're born with a, a biliary atresia, for example, for some of the babies. Um, or cystic fibrosis. You can get a virus. I played netball with a girl and she um, she got a virus and ended up with a floppy heart or cardiomyopathy and she needed a heart transplant when she was about 22. So it can happen to anyone. And I've got a dad recently who talked at my last service and he donated his kidney to his son who went into renal failure at 10 from a virus as well. So we've got some nasty viruses around at the moment. When you're waiting for kidneys, if you're O positive, especially, because that's a pretty common blood group, you have to wait about eight years on dialysis. You can't get listed. And people worry, oh, you know, I don't want my heart to go to some druggie or whatever. You have to get on a transplant waiting list, which takes a long time. You have to sit in front of a board of surgeons and they, you have to sell your case. Why are you better than anyone else to get this? So it, they, not many people make the waiting list, so a lot of people never get listed. But kidneys, you must be on dialysis, so that's three or four times a week going and having your blood rinsed through a machine. Um, so it's hard work for these people. They're very sick and they can't travel and uh, they can't, they, their diet's restricted and um, they have to go to hospital every two or three days and sit on this machine for four hours. But the other ones you can't have anything for machine-wise, so their waiting times are shorter, but you can still um, never get that pager going off if you need a liver, for example. I do know one lady, she suffered a congenital disorder with her best friend, they're both of the same disorder, and they're about 39, and her pager went off for a liver, but her friends never did, and her friends passed away. So it is very sad for these people. Uh, we match people with blood groups, so O, A, etc. But we also go on height and weight, so we can't go and get a really big footy player, six foot four, and put his heart and lungs um, into, say, a cystic fibrosis girl who weighs 40 kilos. So we have to do body matching as well, so it's, your blood group's great, but we have to have the same height and weight. Um, and sometimes we can't remove, if we don't find anyone safe for beautiful lungs, but we can't remove them from the body bit, and we tell the family that. We only take what we've already found a recipient for prior to surgery. Everyone waiting for a kidney in Australia is already on a special um, computer system, and when we get the donor family's blood, we put it into that computer system, and it'll spit out like the top 30 people, because kidneys can be flown around Australia on a commercial flight. They last 24 hours. so. Um, there's a lot of, that we can send kidneys to Perth, Darwin, wherever we need to. Oh, that's a picture of a kidney. Check that out, actually. Um, I don't think you need to say that. Um, so kidneys last 24 hours on ice. Um, so that's fantastic. We can use commercial flights and that's a little bit cheaper. But heart, lung, four to six hours. So if we're sending a heart, lung down to the Austin, for example, I've already got a jet waiting at Coolangatta Airport. So then I'd call the police, they'd pop it in the back of their car and take it down to Coolangatta. And then when the pilot's taken off, he normally rings me just to tell me he's in the air. Then the police meet him at the airport and it goes off to the Austin. So, it's very, um, we've coordinated all this before we go to surgery. Liver's 12 hours and pancreas is 12 hours. Only place in Australia that does pancreatic transplants is Westmead in Sydney. So anyone on the Gold Coast waiting for a pancreatic transplant has to 
their pager goes off, they are already organised to get on the first flight down to Sydney in the morning and um, be picked up to go to Westmead. A little bit about tissue because it's uh, underrated and overlooked, <laughs> but tissue enhances many people's lives. If you are waiting, if you have corneal ulcers and you can't see, um, your surgeon will say, okay, you need corneal transplant, but most people don't know it is donated tissue. And we, can, we have to use it within 10 days, so that's very quickly processed at PA Hospital. But bone and skin and heart valves, um, they can be frozen for up to 10 years. Not that they are, we don't have the stocks in Queensland. Yes, it used to be on your licence. It's come off your licence. Um, came off your licence in 2005 in Queensland. So New South Wales are taking it off the licence now. So it's not going to be on any licences in Australia anymore. It's the only register will be the Australian Organ Donor Register. Why is that? Why? Why is it Because they wanted to have one register. And if they had driver's licence and a register, um, they feel that it wouldn't pick up everyone. But unfortunately, I think the driver's licence was still quite valuable. We had a lot of people in Queensland on the driver's licence um, and you'll see in the next slide or two that the Australian Organ Donor Register, not many people have put their names on it yet. Um, it's run by Medicare, it's not run through us and it's on their Medicare website or you can uh, phone or you can go into their office. Um, but when someone does end up in the intensive care, I access this register to see if they're on there. I never access it before the medical staff sort of say this person is futile, we're going to talk about end of life care with the family. Then I access the register to see if they've left in any intent. So we've got over 22 million and only one and a half million have, people have put their name on that register. That was the latest data in 2011. But we had 4.2 4 million people going over from driver's licences. So when it, they took it off the licence, they transferred those people to the register as an intent, but not a consent. And most of those were between 30 and 45 years of age and female. So we don't know why men um, aren't in that category either. So they're looking at the research behind that to see how they can increase community awareness within the male population. So if any of you have any fantastic ideas, let me know. Um, but most Australians support organ and tissue donation. So that's interesting. But when you come to the intensive care, to that critical time when your son or loved one's lying there and you have to make a decision, that's where families struggle. We're only getting 54% consent rate nationally. And so a lot of families are saying no and we're trying to target that area to have a look at why they're saying no. Do you ask the family if they, they, you may harvest the organs or do, do they have to come forward? No, we, it, a lot of families offer now, they will come forward before we even think about that ourselves um, and because they know they've got a critical head injury, they know that they're not going to survive and they will bring it up. A lot of families do, about on the Gold Coast about 70% of families with a critical head injury bring it up before we ask them. But the families that don't ask, we ask them about retrieving, yes. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to not miss any families. We want to give every family the opportunity to think about it. They don't necessarily have to say yes, it's not for everyone. The Facebook, we've also put it on their timeline. So that's fantastic too because um, Mark, I can never say his surname. <laughs> He uh, thought it was a fantastic idea because there's millions of people around the world waiting for transplants and you can go to a third world country and take advantage of poor people and buy a kidney. It's not the way to do it though and we don't support that practice in Australia or any first world countries or in, through the UN. A little few couple of pictures to wrap it up. But um, this lady, she, we are the leaders in Australia, Queensland, so we did the first child liver transplant in 1987. She's now an adult with children of her own. She was actually re-transplanted this year um, after her, that first donated kidney fail, our uh, liver. We're also, um, Professor Strong at PA Hospital did the first split liver, uh, which saved a lot of children because they would have to have waited for a paediatric donor prior to 1989. So he split a liver, so you can take a little tiny portion and give it to a baby. 
and you can put the rest in an adult and they both work really well and, and the 